Archaeology demonstrates our mistaken belief that we are substantially different from ancient humans. The ancient Egyptians had startling similarities with us despite having unknown languages and cultures. Join us as we cover the strange norms and practices of the ancient Egyptians, even teaching you how to walk just like them. Number 20. Eye Treatment Eye infection was highly frequent among the ancient Egyptians and they used a variety of sometimes unusual healing procedures. Among the therapy options were bactericidal paint and medicines manufactured from human brains. This eye cure was created by separating a human brain into two pieces. In the evening, the first half was combined with honey and rubbed on the afflicted eye. The second half was dried overnight and applied the next morning. The precise origin of the brains utilized in this cure is unclear. However, it is hoped that they were were not obtained by destructive means such as taking it out of an alive person. The usefulness of this brain and honey-based treatment is unknown, as there is no solid proof of its success in the past. Nonetheless, it demonstrates the ancient Egyptians' inventiveness and readiness to try unusual therapies in their quest to cure eye ailments. The usage of such cures, like many historical medical practices, emphasizes the limitations of medical knowledge and resources available at the time. While some of their remedies may look unusual or unconventional to us now. They were most likely developed out of a sincere desire to alleviate suffering and discover solutions to prevalent health problems. It's intriguing to hear about these ancient practices and how they differ from modern treatments. Number 19. Afterlife Servants The ancient Egyptians had a strong belief in the afterlife, and this faith influenced their burial practices. Individuals, notably the esteemed pharaohs, took great care in taking along the essential things and even human companions to ensure a happy and wealthy lifestyle in the afterlife. The notion of the afterlife exceeded the confines of mortality for the revered pharaohs, who held an elevated role in Egyptian culture. They felt that their authority and affluence should continue after passing away. Thus, they insisted on the existence of servants in the afterlife. These servants were required to serve and care for the wants of the pharaohs, ensuring they lived in the same comfort and luxury as they had during their earthly reign. Furthermore, not only pharaohs, but also other wealthy persons who possessed servants engaged in a similar practice. They decided to be buried with their servants because they saw the afterlife as a continuation of life itself. Servants were viewed as devoted friends who would follow their owners on their voyage to the region beyond. It was similar to relocating to a new home or city together, ensuring that the same dynamics and services continued in the afterlife. Number 18. Bowling Believe it or not, but bowling dates back to ancient Egypt, when a game similar to modern-day bowling was played with ten stones resembling bowling balls that were tossed at a hole in the ground. Unlike modern bowling alleys and pin-knocking action, the ancient Egyptians played a game similar to ten-pin bowling but with different rules. This early version of the game, known as the Egyptian game, was played in the Fayum district of Egypt, some 90 kilometers south of Cairo. The game took place in a large space that appeared to be comparable to modern-day bowling alleys. However, However, it was a synthesis of numerous components, merging characteristics of bowling, billiards, and lawn bowls, distinguishing it from the modern 10-pin game. Bowling is thought to have originated in Egypt around 5200 BC. The rudimentary equipment included nine stones on which a stone bowling ball was rolled, with the ball having to navigate a three-piece marble archway before rolling down it. Number 17. Door Locks Ancient Egyptian keys and locks were really intriguing that revealed the complex engineering and security procedures used by this ancient civilization. While the ancient Egyptians utilized a variety of locks, the most popular were hardwood pin tumbler locks, which are thought to be one of the first examples of mechanical locks in history. The wooden pin tumbler locks were made up of a wooden bolt that slipped into a socket on the door frame. Within the bolt were a number of pins of varying lengths. When the door was closed, these pins would exactly connect with holes in the socket, preventing the bolt from being moved and thereby fastening the door. To unlock the door, the owner would insert a special wooden or metal key into the keyhole. The key had notches or teeth that corresponded to the pin's positions within the lock. When the correct key was inserted and turned, it would lift the pins to the precise height, allowing the bolt to slide freely and unlocking the door. This ancient locking mechanism demonstrated the Egyptians' understanding of precision engineering and their ability to create functional and effective security measures. The design of these locks made them difficult to pick or tamper with, providing an added layer of security for homes and valuable possessions. Number 16. 
calendar. Today's calendars assist us in remembering important occasions, such as anniversaries, appointments, and even new product launches. However, having a dependable calendar was a matter of life and death for the ancient Egyptians, especially when it came to predicting Nile inundation. Failure to arrive on that critical day might jeopardize the entire harvest. To meet this critical necessity, the Egyptians constructed a complex method for determining the seasons. Their year was split into three seasons, each lasting four months, inundation, growth, and harvest. Surprisingly, each month had exactly 30 days, resulting in an Egyptian year that was only five days less than our modern year. While this discrepancy may appear insignificant, it compounded over time, leading the seasons to progressively shift and finally reverse their original order. To adjust for this difference, the Egyptians added five days between harvest and flood seasons. These additional days functioned as religious holidays, allowing people to recuperate and prepare for the start of the new year. This ingenious modification assisted the Egyptians Egyptians in maintaining the precision of their calendar, allowing them to efficiently plan and manage their agricultural practices and, as a result, ensure the prosperity of their society. Number 15. Egyptian Makeup Ancient Egypt, with its rich cultural tapestry, has been a favorite film subject. Makeup, for example, had an important function for both men and women, acting as a mark of grandeur and social standing. In this dynamic culture, the quantity of cosmetics one wore was directly related to one's heightened social status. They effectively developed green eye makeup, utilizing the stunning mineral malachite, despite the fact that black eye makeup was a popular choice. This extraordinary civilization is also responsible for for the world's first known manufactured color, the Egyptian blue. The ancient Egyptians were attracted by the incomparable brilliance and adaptability of this vibrant color, which was created roughly 4,500 years ago. The mesmerizing Egyptian blue covered the walls of temples and tombs, inspiring awe and devotion in all who witnessed its splendor. The intricate method of creating this pigment reveals the Egyptians' remarkable command of science and aesthetic expression. The discovery of Egyptian blue has considerably expanded our understanding of ancient art, allowing us to untangle the sophisticated procedures used by artists of the time. Its usage in diverse media, including papyrus, pottery, and even jewelry, demonstrates the Egyptians' innovative use of this bright color across several domains. The long legacy of this amazing pigment continues to inspire artists and scientists alike, demonstrating the ageless nature of ancient Egypt's achievements. Number 14. Strange Toothpaste the clever ancient Egyptians are credited with producing one of the oldest kinds of toothpaste, a remarkable feat dating back to roughly 5000 BC. However, this dental breakthrough was not created just to prepare for romantic dates. Instead, it evolved from a practical need as a result of the widespread dental issues they experienced. The ancient Egyptians ate foods that were frequently high in sand, which wore down their teeth enamel over time. This resulted in major dental concerns, pushing them to seek a remedy to preserve the cleanliness and condition of their teeth. As a result, they created one of the first toothpaste formulations made of ashes, burnt eggshells, and cow hooves, a combination that could raise some eyebrows today. While the substances may appear unusual and unappealing, the Egyptians' grasp of mouth hygiene was well ahead of its time. They meticulously combined ingredients to make the best paste for their teeth. Archaeologists discovered instructions for making this unusual toothpaste, demonstrating the Egyptians' dedication to dental health. Ashes were used because of their abrasive characteristics, which efficiently removed dirt and plaque from tooth surfaces. Crushed, burned eggshells added an extra layer of abrasiveness to the teeth washing and polishing process. Ground ox hooves were added to improve the texture and efficiency of the toothpaste, acting as yet another abrasive component to maintain excellent oral health. Number 13. Meteorites when archaeologists discovered metal beads in an ancient Egyptian tomb, they made an unusual finding. In the year 1911, the discovery was made in Egypt's northern area. The fact that the ancient Egyptians had not yet completed the process of iron smelting until roughly 2,000 years later made these beads extremely unique. This perplexing circumstance posed the issue of how these metal beads came to be. Chemical examinations of the metal beads revealed an astonishing fact. They were made from meteorites. This hypothesis presented a persuasive persuasive cause for the presence of metal things in Egyptian civilization at a time when iron smelting had
had not yet been established. Meteorites from outer space carried valuable metals with them, which the ancient Egyptians skillfully fashioned into exquisite one-of-a-kind beads. Egyptian hieroglyphs provide another persuasive argument in favor of this idea. There is one hieroglyph that depicts iron, which can be interpreted as metal from the sky. The importance of this symbol becomes frighteningly clear, as it fully coincides with the premise that the Egyptians were well aware of and cherished the alien origins of these valuable metals. Number 12. Birth Bricks the process of childbirth was highly valued in ancient Egyptian civilization since it was viewed as a mystical and holy event. The sobering fact that not all children would survive to maturity emphasized the significance of this occasion. During labor, ladies would crouch over Abydos birth bricks. These birth bricks most likely differed in substance and design between homes. Wealthier households had higher quality bricks with more detailed artistic characteristics, believing that doing so would increase their chances of having healthy children. These birth bricks were embellished with artwork, and one particularly appealing component was the representation of the human mother and her assistants. Normally, hair was painted in black, but these ladies were pictured with sky-blue hair, symbolizing their heavenly nature and spiritual importance during birthing. Children, regardless of gender, were regarded as a heavenly blessing in ancient Egyptian society. This viewpoint was diametrically opposed to the Greeks' practice of abandoning undesired or frail children to the elements. The Greeks were astounded by the Egyptians' constant constant care and dedication to rearing every kid born into their family. The ancient Egyptians' profound spiritual beliefs were matched by the celebration of childbirth and regard for children as blessings. Childbirth was more than simply a physical procedure. It was a very spiritual and symbolic occasion that demonstrated their belief in the divine interdependence of people and gods. Number 11. Shaved Heads the practice of shaving one's head was a popular fashion trend in ancient Egypt. This historical truth is corroborated by photographic evidence and writings made by outsiders who were intrigued by Egypt's unusual dress choices. While current historians today have a firm grasp on the causes of this seemingly strange pattern, older observers were baffled. The presence of lice was the fundamental cause for extensive head shaving in ancient Egypt. These parasite insects infested not just regular families, but even the tombs of Egyptian monarchs. Evidently, lice erupted from the deceased remnants, causing a nationwide epidemic. Despite their attempts to combat lice with medicines, the ancient Egyptians had minimal success, with the therapies either proving unsuccessful or too difficult to be worth the effort. Frustrated by the constant infestation, both men and women resorted to cutting all of their hair off their bodies as a dramatic remedy to the lice problem. Women, too, embraced the practice of head shaving in this context, electing to wear wigs instead. However, once contaminated with lice, these wigs were abandoned to avoid the spread of the annoying insects. They were able to preserve hygiene and prevent the discomfort caused by lice infestations thanks to this easy and effective strategy. Number 10. Strange Pillows Pillows in ancient Egypt were made from materials that would be considered strange by modern standards, such as wood, ivory, and even stone. However, it's vital to note that these pillows were really headrests placed beneath the heads of esteemed persons. The ancient Egyptians thought that the head contained the essence of life, making head support crucial for maintaining body vigor and appropriate blood circulation. These headrests were also thought to be protective talismans, warding off malicious energies and demons. The head Headrests were frequently embellished with representations of gods, imbuing them with divine powers to strengthen this idea. Surprisingly, stone cushions were used for living, each fulfilling a specific role. The ancient Egyptians slept near or directly on the ground, which presented the difficulty of bugs, pests, and rodents crawling across their faces at night. Individuals used rocky headrests to provide a physical barrier between their faces and the ground to minimize these unwanted contacts. This, in turn, kept insects and other critters out of their nostrils, ears, eyes, and mouths as they slept. One would wonder why a softer cushion was not used instead. The ancient Egyptians, on the other hand, cherished their distinctive headrests for their symbolic and functional significance. These headrests had great cultural and religious importance, going beyond physical comfort to include mysticism, protection, and ancient beliefs. Number 9. Burial Process The burial procedure was extremely important to ancient Egyptians because they felt it was a critical step in guaranteeing 
being a comfortable afterlife for the deceased. They believed that if departed people were not properly cared for, they may retain sentiments of wrath or carry grudges, making the extensive system of burial rites necessary for ensuring immortality and a favorable voyage to the afterlife. Wealthier Egyptians chose stone tombs for their loved ones, supplemented with the practice of mummification to preserve the dead. Mummification entailed carefully removing the body's internal organs, wrapping it in linen, and putting it in a stone sarcophagus or wooden coffin. The magnificent pyramids were built specifically for the respected pharaohs to demonstrate their prestigious place in the afterlife. The most complex mummification method, which lasted 70 days, required the body to be treated with a salt combination known as natron to ensure its preservation. Funerals of the wealthy contained more luxurious things to accompany the departed, although all funerals, regardless of social standing, included supplies for the journey to the afterlife. Funerary writings and Shabti figurines were frequently found in tombs. The Shabti statues were thought to do laborious labor on behalf of the pharaohs in the afterlife. Following the burial, it was common for living relatives or servants to visit the tomb on occasion, bringing food gifts and praying on the deceased's behalf. People in the afterlife were thought to help and aid their living family members in this reciprocal connection. Number 8. Penalty for Hurting a Cat In ancient Egypt, the penalties for hurting a cat were harsh, going far beyond animal cruelty regulations. The penalty for taking a life of a cat was quite severe. One may face death. A simple error, like running over a cat with a chariot, may result in a capital sentence. Without exception, the rigid rule applied to everybody. In a significant historical story by historian Diodorus Siculus, the pharaoh of Egypt personally intervened to save a Roman citizen who had accidentally harmed a cat. Despite the king's attempt, the Egyptians were unforgiving, unwilling to pardon the man even if it meant risking confrontation with Rome. A mob arose, lynched the poor guy, and left his lifeless body in the streets in a frightening demonstration of their ardent love for cats and undying loyalty to their feline pals. When Egypt faced the invasion of Persia in 525 BC, this valued esteem for cats would lead to a watershed moment. The Persians exploited their great devotion to cats tactically against the Egyptians. They walked with a procession of dogs, lambs, and cats, as well as other Egyptian-loved creatures, and their shields portrayed the figure of an Egyptian. Egyptian cat goddess. This symbolic exhibition sought to capitalize on the Egyptians' dread of injuring these cherished creatures, using it as a strategic advantage throughout the fight. Number 7. Laxatives Laxatives played an important role in the everyday lives of the ancient Egyptians, becoming an essential element of their health and beauty regimen. Most Egyptians would ingest laxatives three days each month as a sort of regular detoxification. This procedure was thought to not only ward against illnesses, but also to aid in the maintenance of a thin and appealing figure, which was highly valued in their society. Even the great historian Herodotus acknowledged the Egyptians' love of cleansing rituals. Their preferred laxative was one prepared from castor oil, an efficient cure they relied on for a variety of health issues. Surprisingly, it appears that no ailment was beyond the reach of their beloved laxatives. The Egyptians adopted the idea of forcibly removing ailments from their bodies in order to speed up the healing process and properly cleanse themselves. Ancient Egyptians, like contemporary people, had specialized physicians for specific regions of the body. Its well-organized healthcare system featured dentists for dental treatment, optometrists for vision concerns, Concerns, and without a doubt, its own kind of proctologists who cared for their intestinal health requirements. The Egyptians took great satisfaction in their refined emptying techniques, viewing them as a crucial component of their general well-being. Surprisingly, the origins of these procedures were attributed to the god Thoth. According to their beliefs, Thoth created these purifying procedures and bequeathed them to the Egyptians, making them a priceless heavenly gift. Number 6. Mourning for Cats In ancient Egypt, the death of a cat was seen as a real tragedy, comparable to the loss of a loved one. The attachment between Egyptians and their pet cats was so strong that grief for a deceased feline was equal to losing a family member, even a wife. When a beloved cat passed away, the entire household was overcome with sadness. Sadness rites were maintained, with one notable custom including shaving off the brows as a visual mark of sadness, and Egyptians used to continue mourning until they grew back. This deed, 
exhibited the family's grief and expressed their genuine loyalty to their dead kitty buddy. The deceased cat's body was treated with the greatest care and respect, as befitting royalty. It was carefully wrapped in exquisite linens to maintain its dignity. The small corpse was then embalmed, which required treating it with cedar oil and fragrant spices, imparting a lovely scent to accompany the cat in the hereafter. Because the ancient Egyptians believed in an afterlife for their feline companions, the mummification procedure was methodically carried out. The preserved form of the cat would subsequently be deposited in a catacomb, a revered burial location. The cat's grave would be adorned with a variety of gifts in preparation for the journey to the afterlife. As supplies for the cat's continuing nutrition in the afterlife, milk, mice, and rats were included in their graves. Now it's time for today's subscriber pick. This photo of ancient Egyptian artwork has confused netizens around the globe. They're having a hard time figuring out what the people in this image are up to. To us, it seems like a doctor giving his patient an eye exam. What do you think? Let us know in the comments below. Number five, hunting with trained cheetahs. The idea of big cats in ancient Egypt was not the same as it is today. Surprisingly, by Egyptian standards, a cheetah was considered a smaller cat, a mild enough species to be kept in families. While having a pet cheetah was not a regular practice for the average Egyptian family, some of the pharaohs relished the opportunity. Ramses II was one such pharaoh who was fascinated by these gorgeous felines. His palace became a home for tamed cheetahs, a stunning display that demonstrated the Egyptian monarch's majesty and might. Other Egyptian monarchs opted to keep cheetahs as part of their retinue. Thus, Ramses II was not alone. Tomb paintings from antiquity provide a fascinating peek into the life of these pharaohs and their close relationships with these domesticated cheetahs. The artwork depicts Egyptian monarchs starting on hunting journeys with their devoted and magnificent cheetah partners. These majestic hunters wandered the woods together, symbolizing the coexistence of man and the environment. These domesticated cheetahs were more than simply symbols of power and grandeur. They also had a significant cultural meaning. Their presence beside the pharaohs represented the ancient Egyptian appreciation for nature and their belief in the divine interdependence of people and animals. Number four, city for sacred crocodiles. A whole religion focused on the devotion of Sobek, the crocodile deity, in the ancient Egyptian city of Crocodilopolis. A holy crocodile named Sukkis lived in the sanctuary of this religious center. This beloved species became the focus of pilgrimages, drawing travelers from all over the world to pay reverence to the sacred reptile. Sukkis, the holy crocodile, was lavishly decorated, with gold and jewelry adorning its imposing shape. A dedicated group of priests provided ongoing care and commitment to its requirements. Pilgrims anxious to show their respect made food gifts, which the priests ceremoniously gave to the revered crocodile. The priests would pry open the crocodile's huge jaws with great reverence, enticing it to ingest the sacrifices given in its honor. The crocodile was even served wine in an unusual ritual when the crocodile passed away. It was given an exceptional hero's burial worthy of a deity. Its body was mummified and delicately wrapped in exquisite linen bandages to preserve its spiritual essence. The tunnels underneath became the divine creature's ultimate resting place, assuring its permanent legacy as it entered the afterlife. A new crocodile was chosen to succeed Sukkis. This lucky reptile was decked with priceless gems as well, carrying on the holy heritage of the crocodile god. As each subsequent crocodile acquired the mantle of heavenly representation, Number three, board games. The ancient Egyptians were not only brilliant in the arts and sciences, but they also liked playing board games in their spare time. These activities offered amusement and leisure, making the ancient Egyptian cottage an ideal place to spend their weekends. During that time period, one of the most popular board games was Dogs and Jackals, also known as Hounds and Jackals. This game, which dates back to roughly 2500 BC, has a board with 20 squares organized in a spiral design. The board's elaborate design added to its attractiveness, demonstrating the Egyptians' propensity for a aesthetics and ingenuity. Another well-liked game was Senet, which was popular among people from all walks of life, including royalty. This game had a large board with 30 squares, and its exact rules are still unknown. 
much like the intriguing game of Monopoly today. The board was divided into three rows of ten squares each, with the last five squares decorated to hint at a possible afterlife theme. Interestingly, King Tutankhamun was buried with one of these Senet game boards, emphasizing the game's importance in ancient Egyptian civilization. Number 2. War for Hippos One of ancient Egypt's most extraordinary disputes emerged from an unlikely source, the pharaoh's beloved pet hippos. Pharaoh Sekanenre Tau II adored these lovely creatures and kept a pool where they could frolic and enjoy themselves. His love for them knew no limitations, and he was willing to make the ultimate sacrifice for their sake, which he finally did. Egypt was a split state at the time, with the mighty kingdom of Hyksos ruled by Pharaoh Apopi. Sekenenre Tau II, a minor monarch, was forced to pay tributes to Apopi, a humiliating situation he reluctantly accepted. Apopi, on the other hand, insisted that Sekenenre get rid of his beloved hippos, citing their disturbing noise as the cause. Given Apopi's remote location, it appeared to be an unreasonable and nasty request. Nonetheless, Sekenenre's love for his hippos had no boundaries and he saw this demand as an insult not just to himself, but also to his beloved beasts. He proclaimed unequivocally that this was an issue worthy of battle. Sekenenre took command of his army and fought Apopi in a struggle for the right to preserve his beloved hippos. Tragically, he passed away in the battle as a result of his unyielding commitment to preserve what he valued. The conflict, however, did not finish. His son took up the mantle and maintained the fight for two generations. The struggle, spurred by a pharaoh's passion for his hippos, finally led to the restoration of Egypt's unity. Number 1. Beer the ancient Egyptians had a long tradition of producing and drinking beer, which played an important role in their everyday life. Beer was a mainstay in their diet, much like it is for many people now. The brewing process was mostly done at the household level, with each family member participating in the production, promoting a sense of togetherness and collaboration. Brewing techniques included fermenting grains, especially barley, and experimenting with flavors such as dates, honey, and spices. The ability to add nearly anything to their brew allowed for inventiveness, and a diverse spectrum of flavors, making beer making a joyful and exciting endeavor. Beer also had a religious and social significance in ancient Egyptian civilization, in addition to its gastronomic value. It was not only presented to their deities, but it was also a crucial component during festivals and gatherings, bringing a feeling of festivity and spirituality to these events. Beer drinking also has practical advantages. It provided water and nutrients, making it an important element of their daily diet. Furthermore, alcohol acted as a socializing tool, bringing people together and promoting friendship among members of the community. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.